Good morning. This is Victoria with Dream Dogs and Hope Service Dogs. And I'm going to share with you why I recommend and why I use and why I like the Chameleon 3 from Martin Systems. Uh, and while we're doing it, I'm going to write down the information so we have that and we keep up with what all is going on. Okay. So I have a brand new one here still in the box, which is pretty snazzy. And I have to pull up. This is my notebook I use whenever I go to school so I can write notes and then I come home and I recopy them. So yeah, I'm kind of a nerd that way. Now with the chameleon, it's not just because it doesn't look like an e-collar, but that is one of the nice perks about it. But there are five real big patents that I like and that I, why I like the chameleon. Five big patents that they have. So I'm going to label one, two, three, four, five patents. And then there's a sixth one that's a, t a patent. It's not like the best patent, but, um, you know, for why you should buy it. It's kind of like the whole, it doesn't look like any collar, but it's pretty awesome. So I'm going to share those with you. And so I have a brand new one in the box. So I'll do kind of an unboxing video. And then I have one that I actually use. This is one of my personal ones. So I want to show you how I have mine set up so you can see that as well. Okay. So I've got two to show you. And we'll go over the patents while we're doing it. So it comes in a case. This is the case currently that it comes in, right? Chameleon um, with the logo. It's nice, right? And it's nice because it'll be protected. Inside is the foam. This is what, what it looks like. Uh, I sell out of these things as fast as I get them in. So right now, this is the only one I have in stock, um, but I'm going to probably place an order this coming week. So first, has a guarantee, has a two-year guarantee warranty. Uh, which is pretty cool. Um, it doesn't cover if you, you lose it. It doesn't cover if your dog chews it up. But if it malfunctions, you know, due to the part, it's covered. It also comes with the Tiny Trainer for Finger Kick and the Chameleon 3. And they're two different things. So I'm going to show you that as we get into this. And we've got the whole time. And why we're doing this for our group class today is I it was requested. So because it was requested, you guys, you ask for it, you get it. Uh, now, I do have this cross-posting to a few different pages that I have. So if I don't see comments, just tag me in them and I'll get to them afterwards. But if you have any comments or any questions, go ahead and comment. And like I said, I will get to them as fast as I can. Okay. So here we go. This is how it comes. This is the Chameleon 3. The Chameleon 3 is the collar. It is the receiver. It is the part that your dog wears. First, it doesn't look like a normal e-collar. There's no brick on it. And part of that, the first patent that I'm going to talk to you about, is the chameleon patent. Chameleon patent. Right, write it down. Chameleon patent. The chameleon patent enables you to have these different islands. These are called islands, right? This is the brains of the operation, okay? Uh, this box right here. And then these are the islands. So this is a size medium. A medium has three islands on each side. A small has two islands on each side. And a large has four islands on each side. What I have found is large dogs can wear a small or a medium, right? Mostly what I order, if I have some in stock, I usually have in stock mediums because it is easier for more dogs to wear. Unless your dog is small, uh, and we do have pictures of... Uh, Raleigh and of Ollie and they are little seven pound dogs uh, wearing their chameleon so you can see how nice it looks on the small dog so I do really this is my recommended collar for small dogs is going with um, with one of these so the chameleon patent right we're still on that chameleon pen see all these uh, white screw hickeys <laughs> on on the inside here these are white plastic screws and they are where you can move the contact points to. So here's the black one right here. Here's the red one right here. Each island, you see this island, the red island, right? It has the little red dots up here, the black island. I'm not going to tell you it has black dots. Don't look for black dots. Red island here, red island here. So it goes red, black, red, black. You need to have a red and a black contact in, okay, uh, for it to work. Now you can have the two contacts on this side. You can have the contacts across from each other. But you need to have at least one red and at least one black on your chameleon to work. 
put the reds on the red, the box on the box. It's just going to be easier for you. Okay. But if you have a dog who is sensitive, you can move these around every hour, every half hour if you want to. And you can actually take out these plastic screw hickeys and then it makes it easier. You don't need to have a screwdriver to pull the, the uh, plastic screws out and to put in the contact points, right? You just would unscrew it, screw it in, unscrew it, screw it in, and it would make it a lot easier. So you could do that, but you can change it. Uh, and there's something called feathers. Here's my personal one. This is what a feather looks like. Okay. So you see that, uh, that's the feather and this is the new attachment for the feathers. That's pretty cool. Uh, and so I'm, I'll get to this in a minute, but I wanted to show you feathers are uh, a chameleon initiative, right? Um, Bart came up with this idea and feathers are really nice because it has a small contact area for the dog and uh, because it's easier. It has some flexibility, uh, whereas the normal contact points don't. So your chameleon will likely come with a little baggie of the old contact points, right? These were the original contact points. These are the new ones. So they all come with these ones now. Uh, and I really like these and they have uh, longer ones and they have the normal size ones and they have a couple different types of contact points, but it's real easy. You just, well, it's usually really easy. There we go. Uh, you just unscrew it. See, and this is the contact point and that's what the hole looks like without anything in it. Okay. And you can move that around to any place on those three islands. And if I have this medium, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have 16 spots to choose from. Uh, I can, as long as I have one red and one black, you know, I have a whole bunch of options here. So if you do have that dog that is very sensitive, uh, you can change it up every time. And that'll help uh, prevent any uh, irritation from forming. Okay. Also, notice that... It doesn't have the big brick that most e-collars have. So this is a lighter collar, right? And the big brick, what happens with the big brick on the e-collars is what we would tell people is make sure you put it on the side or towards the top of your dog's neck. So then if it falls to the base of your dog's neck, you know that it's too loose, okay? And what happens? Gravity happens. And it always wants to fall towards the base of your dog's neck. And whenever it's there, you know it's not getting as good of contact. You don't have to worry about that with this one. It is designed to go on like this. So this piece right here, the brain of the operation here, sits at the base of your dog's neck. Well, why do you want that? Because then the contact points come up. So one of the things that people will do with a normal brick type uh, e-collar is put a brick over here and a brick over here to help balance it out. The two bricks doesn't, if they both, go up to, you know, whatever the numbers they go up to. Um, if you have 100 on this side and 100 on this side on one of those, you don't get a 200 shock, right? You get better distribution, you get better contact. And so that's kind of the idea behind it. Uh, but you can get the best fit for your dog. You can also change the sensation, okay? Uh, more contacts is gonna reduce the sensation, okay? If you have just one set of contacts, it's going to be the most sensation. So when we have sensitive dogs in, uh, we just send them a bunch of extra contact points and we ask them to put in uh, for all those extra holes until, until the dog does well. So you can really fine tune it that you can't do with a lot of other collars. Oh, and we have number seven here I just thought of, which is Emily, which I will talk to you about as well. It's not a person. What could Emily be then? You'll know. You'll know. You just have to bear with me. Uh, and the other thing too, is it is discreet when using out in public because it doesn't look like an e-collar, which is really nice. Uh, you know, your dog, it's comfortable for them uh, and we really like it. So this, this is Chameleon, the Chameleon 3. This is the Chameleon patent. Um, some words of words of warning is don't try to bend it the other way. Don't do that. Keep it bent like a smiley face or a piece of watermelon right? But it's all good, right? Chameleon patent. That's one of the patents. And we really like that patent. Uh, another patent is the finger kick patent. Okay. Here's the finger kick. And other companies have tried to copy this, but nobody has done near as good a job as what this one had. And I'm going to share with you a story on whenever I 
before I went to Silver School, we had got a uh, another e-collar who has a not a finger kick, but a push button. Okay, and it was big and it was clunky and it actually was more like a watch. So me trying to do it in a wheelchair, you have to put the strap right here and put the button right here so you can have access because if I'm pushing myself in a wheelchair, I can't do this while I'm doing it. So I need to do it with one hand. So it's basically right here. Well, what else is right here? Well, it would be the, the wheel and everything else. So I really didn't like that. Whenever I saw the finger kick in person, it is so small. There is a little nubbin. Do you see the little nubbin right there? You should see the little nubbin. No, not really. There you go. You can kind of see the little nubbin. This little nubbin is what you push and watch what happens. See that little red flash? That means that I pushed it. Okay. So this is fantastic. It is better than a Bluetooth. It is the fastest um, trigger, wireless trigger on the market. You do have that control at your finger tips. I wear it on this finger and then I can hit it with my thumb while I'm doing it. My thumb is just the perfect position for that. So now if I'm pushing in my wheelchair, it's all good. And then I have that. And now I've upgraded to an electric chair, so it makes it a lot easier. Uh, and if I don't want to use it, I can just turn it up that way. Or I can move it to a different hand. I can move it to a different finger, right? So we do have that. So what this is, this is not, this is the, the remote, right? The finger kick is not a substitute for the remote. The finger kick works the remote. So I had somebody tell me that they brought their dog out with the collar and the finger kick and they left their remote at home. And I said, no, 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 no. It, it doesn't work that way. Uh, this only works when it's about 25 meters of the transmitter. So you have to be kind of close by for this to work. Uh, don't leave this at home and take this and think that you're doing right because that is wrong. Don't be wrong because this is a wireless trigger for the transmitter button. So whatever I have my transmitter set to, my finger kick will activate it instead of me pushing the button, which takes me from, oh, where's my remote at and finding it, or even if I have it hanging here, right? Instead of having to reach for it and push the button, if my dog's doing something and I need to push the button, I just push it, it's in my hand, okay? And that's really nice to have. Uh, and I'm gonna go over how to use that with you after we cover the different uh, Patents. So the next patent, that one is the finger kick patent. Often replicated, never duplicated. The finger kick. Um, the original one here, this is the best one. So, so far we have the chameleon and the finger kick for the patents, right? Next patent that we're going to talk about. You ready? This is the best one ever, I think, um, is the contact method. Here we go. So let me write it down first. Con, and I hope you're writing it down too. This is number three, contact method and this is so i remember which ones i've already talked to you about contact method so you can know whether your dog has contact or not okay with the chameleon it's impossible to accidentally overstim your dog due to contact what happens a lot of times when you're putting a normal normal an old-fashioned we'll call it e-collar on your dog you don't know if your dog has contact so what do you do well you do the, I'm going to reach two fingers in and see if, if I can get underneath the collar strap. Well, no, I'm going to reach two fingers and see if I can touch the two contact points. You just know it has to be tight. And tight equals a dog, especially when you get those fluffy dogs in. You get those golden retrievers, those huskies, those German shepherds, those fuzzy dogs that you don't know if they have contact or not. You end up with the dog who's doing a <laughs> because they can't breathe right uh, because you have it too tight or sometimes they feel it sometimes they don't whenever i got my first chameleon no i've been training oh how many years hmm, minimum of 15 years at that point uh 16 maybe whenever i got my first chameleon i've been doing e-collar for a minimum of 10 years minimum of 10 years i know what i'm doing you know it's all professional stuff however whenever i went and put this on my golden retriever gypsy she I didn't have good contact about half the time when I put this on her or any fuzzy dog, you know, like gypsy or uh, any of the goldens or any of the fuzzies, I don't have good contact. So you have to make sure you have good contact because I know what I'm doing. I still didn't have good contact because there's no way to tell in, in old fashioned e-collars if you have good contact or not. Okay. So I 
assumed I did and I didn't. So what happens is it doesn't hit it right. You know, it doesn't hit it right. It doesn't hit it right. And then it hits it right. And your dog's like, whoa, you got me up there because you're thinking the dog's not listening to me and you're going up with it. Okay. Well, Vicki, that sounds really awesome. How does that happen? When you turn it on, you swipe, swipe, swipe it on. And you see how the lights are flashing. And if you see like this, you can see the lights are flashing the whole way around. Whenever I, so you see the flashy lights, right? When I touch and I have contact, it goes down to a steady one flash. Bim, 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 but without it. Now if I hit both sides over here, same thing, right? Both sides over here, same thing. Flash right here, flash right here, flash. So as long as I have contact, I've got two reds, uh-uh. Two blacks, uh-uh. I don't have contact. But if you get the opposite ones, you do have contact, okay? That's how you know you have contact. This is worth it. I mean, if nothing else, even if you're like, ah, I don't need a finger kick, ah, I don't care how it looks on my dog, ah, I don't care if I can move the contact points around, I can move the whole unit around even though it'll move because of gravity. This in itself, and the reason I saved this to number three, uh, is this letting me know this contact method, letting me know that I have good contact, this is worth its weight in gold, guys, or platinum or diamonds or, I don't know, whatever high value currency is, right? This is amazing, okay? Now, this will go for two minutes from when I turn it on or whenever I push a, a button. Once I push a button, it's off now. You heard that I have it on tone vibrate. So it's off now, and it just will flash. You can use Emily to fix that and to turn it every time you stim that it seeks for contact, okay? And uh, what's Emily? I'm, I'm going to tell you what Emily is. You, you have to wait. Say it's on your dog and you're not sure if it's loosened up or not. And you're not sure if you still have contact. What do you do? It's on your dog. Swipe it off. Now it's turned off. Swipe it back on again. And then you can see if the little running lights are going. If the little running lights are going, you don't have contact. If, if you turn it on and, and it's good, you, my friend, are good to go. Okay? So you'll know whether the con collar has contact so you don't overstim your dog. So that to me is the biggest, biggest, biggest patent, the biggest awesome amazingness that this offers, okay? Now there's another one and uh, it's called the SSC patent because in French, apparently it's a translation, but it doesn't make sense for us here. Uh, what it is, is it's the consistent, reliable stimulation. And what that means is, I'm going to shut this off. Uh, what that means is wet or dry, you can't overstim your dog. Okay, so I've got a story to tell you. It's a quick one. On one of the traditional brick e-collars, I had a client and a friend. Uh, her dog was out in a pond, right? What happens? Water dissipates out the electricity. And even though it's not electricity, like you know, guys know what I'm talking about. I don't use fancy words. And the dog comes out of the water and it amplifies it right the the water amplified it and he was stimmed at his normal working level but he felt it three times as bad as what he should have felt it okay and he had a aversive reaction and did not want to go back in the pond it took him a while to get him back into that pond because he thought the pond had done it okay now if they would have been using the chameleon it automatically uh, senses and adjusts based on what is needed. So most brick e-collars, and they don't tell you this because a lot of trainers haven't learned it or has forgotten about it, but if you talk to especially the hunt dog ones, because hunt dogs go in water and out of water and they use e-collars, they will tell you when the dog comes out of the water, you have to turn it down to one third of what you were using. So if you're using a three, turn it down to a one. If you're using a 10, turn it down to a three. If you're using a 30, turn it down to a 10. Uh, so you don't accidentally overstim your dog. Now, wet or dry. So this is wet. This is the sudden rainstorms that we have in Florida. This is, oh, my dog needs a bath and he has his e-collar on. My dog went swimming. My dog went and rolled around in the dew outside and got his coat all wet. Right? It's not just for people who do hunt tests and who swim with their dogs. Uh, another patent that uh, we like 
that we like to talk about is the new high tension, the NHT patent. And what that is, is it's the battery patent. Now, one of the things I'm sure you're asking me is, because I don't have any traditional brick e-collars to share with you today, but traditional brick collars are pretty big. Even when they make them small, they're still pretty big. What the heck is going on? Well, this new high tension patent means that this tiny collar receiver has an extremely long battery life, five to seven days. Uh-huh, yeah, five to seven days on one charge. Usually with the brick ones, you have to charge this up uh, usually every other day, depending on how you're using it. This one's five to seven days. And for some people, it has been up to about a month, depending on how often you use your e-collar. So what that means to you is, as you're changing up these contact points and as you're dealing with everything, you don't have to worry about charging it now. This, you have to charge more. The remote, you have to charge more. The, uh, the collar itself, <clears throat> really once every five to seven days it's really nice it's a weird way to charge it but you only have to do it once every five to seven days so it works and it comes with a whole bunch of charges too that you can do so that's good okay uh the number six so those are the five big patents those are the five patents on why you need a chameleon three and guess who can get you one i can um so just message me if you're interested in getting one uh because I can order them for you. And then you don't have to, no, I mean, you can order themselves. You can go to Martin System Shop currently and you can order them. Uh, you can see the pricing and everything else. Here's the problem is your credit card is gonna ding you for a foreign transaction fee if you're living in the US and doing this. You have to pay to have it brought over here from Belgium. You have to deal with customs because they do take, you know, you'll have to set up an account with them if you don't have one and you'll have to get, um, you know, pay they release it after you pay them for it. Sometimes lately you have to deal with them holding it because they think it's something that it's not, which is really strange, but okay. Uh, and then you finally get it. So I can take care of all of that for you. Like I said, sometimes I have them in stock. Sometimes I don't. They have a bunch of different things. And then I can share with you how to use it too, which is nice. I do have a free course on our online school uh, on how to use it. And this is going in there too. So that'll kind of be a, uh, a matrix type moment. No, inception. It'll be an inception type moment. So anyway, um, the sixth pattern is the tone and the vibrate are different for the different levels that it has. For example, let me turn it on and I will show you. So here is one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, how cool is that? Let me just sit this down so I can do them faster. And this will be from nine to one. <laughs> That's the funniest thing. I love it. So, so you do have that. Uh, the different sounds. The idea behind it was, you know, whenever dogs are out, wolves are out, whatever, right? Like the deeper the sound, the more threatening it is. It's better than like, Arr. does it work? Don't know. It depends on your dog, right? Um, but the tone and vibrate, that's, they're also together. Tone and vibrate, you, you only have one with the other. So, uh, so you do get the tone and the vibrate with this as well. And there's also, are you, listen, I don't know if you can hear it, but watch the lights and listen for, it's a little like, little click. So the little click, if you can hear it, if not, you're going to have to buy one yourself so you can hear it. I'm sorry, that's the only way around it. But that's on zero. So there is a zero button on here. And all it is is that little click. So you can use it as a keep going signal if you wanted to train your dog up that way. But that's an option for you. Okay. Uh, how to use the chameleon. Well, first, red dot to red dot. I swipe to turn on or to turn off. Now, if you listen to the chime and watch the lights, do that next. Do do do. Tones go low to high. That turns it on. Do, do, do. High to low turns it off. Now you see you're seeing the flash and you're hearing the tones at the same time. Now by 
hearing and seeing at the same time, I know my battery in this is good. If I turn it on and it goes flash, 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 do -do -do, then I know that that's not going to work out well and that it needs a charge. And it also means I can probably uh, use it for what I need it and then put it on the charger. How do you charge it? Well, first, what you need to do every time I take it on, take it off or put it on before I put it on, I just go and I finger tighten up these contacts because sometimes they will loosen uh, depending on your dog, depending on the fur and everything else. So you just want to go and you want to make sure everything's tight. Okay. Second, how this comes is you have two options because they are, remember, where do we order them from? We order them from Belgium. So we have a European plug and we have a American a normal plug. <laughs> but we have a, a European and a, a US plug. I don't use the European plugs. I don't travel to Europe. I'd like to. Don't know when that's going to happen, COVID. Uh, what do you do? You push this on. There we, nope. Get it on in both of them. There we go. My plug is able to be used. It also comes with this handy dandy cord. Now they have upgraded that this used to be two different plugs. Having it together is so much easier. So you plug the USB into the USB hole in the plug, and then it has two ends. And if you look, one's a skinny end, one's a fat end. They're for different things. This has the red dot on one side to turn it on and off. The other side, if you remove the silicone, it has the skinny plug. So you can plug in the skinny plug and that's going to charge this up. It will fully charge within two hours. Okay. So I will unplug that because I'm not plugging it in for you guys today. And then there's also this clear doohickey. Clear doohickey is if you have the micro, which I have some micros, and the micro is not attached to a chameleon extender, you can just pop the micro in there, which is pretty cool. So we have a micro set up. Django's using it right now. Uh, and to charge it up, we just pop it in there. Super easy. If you have the chameleon, you're going to take this little red and black faux chopstick thingy. My official terms. Uh, the red and the black go in there. Okay. And then you have to make sure, you see how this is not pushed in the whole way? You see how that little silver is sticking out, but this is pushed in the whole way? That is a problem. You need to push it in the whole way. That is your first issue. If you're having a problem with charging, that is the first thing that you check is to make sure that these are pushed in all the way. And the red, you see there's this little red right here and there's these two lines right here. That means this one gets the red. Now, once I set this up, I usually don't take it apart. Okay, so if you can do it once, you're good to go, but know how to do it all the other times too. And then to charge it, you wanna clamp red onto red black onto black. Okay. Make sure it's plugged in. And then you're going to either take this or it comes with a little magnet. I actually find it so much easier to use the little magnet. So I have this little magnet It's on a keychain um, wheel here, but I have this over by my charging station and you're going to swipe it on. When you swipe it on, if you hear a tone, you do not have this set up right. If you do not hear a tone and you just see it flash, more rapid, it doesn't have the running lights, it just does a, a rapid flash, that's good. And what you're gonna find is it might not be a very rapid fast flash, but as it gets more charged, it'll more rapid, and then it'll just glow. Whenever it glows, you know it's fully charged, okay? So that's how you charge this up. This other one will be a half battery, whole battery thing, and it'll flash, flash, flash. And then whenever it's fully charged, the battery at the bottom of this will just glow. So that's how you charge it up, okay? Super easy. It sounds weird at first because you do have to plug things into each other, uh, but it's easy to do. And like I said, it, it, it lasts for five to seven days, guys. Holy moly. You kind of like that, you know? You can't have anything bad to say about it if it lasts for five to seven days. And then it, say I decide I'm going to Europe and I need to bring this. Push the button and pull that off and put your European one on. That's how you do it. Okay. And that is how you charge it up.
Uh, watch the tones, watch the flashes whenever it happens. I have had clients who were having issues with it. Uh, and what I ask them to do is show me, you know, show me what's going on. Uh, you know, do a, a Facebook live or shoot a video and then send it over to me, whichever works best for you. And usually we can figure it out. It's been a couple times that I haven't been able to figure it out. Um, for them, it was possibly a, a faulty wire or a faulty clear plastic doohickey. So, you know, we get it taken care of. Remember the warranties for two years. So they could talk to me. I talked to, to uh, the folks over at Martin Systems and they get it all taken care of. Super easy, right? Okay. Next is going to be how this, this we're taking care of, how this works. What it is this, it's called the Tiny Trainer. You can see up here it says Tiny Trainer. Tiny Trainer for Finger Kick. So you'll also hear us describe this as the TT4FK, Tiny Trainer for Finger Kick, FK, right? TT4FK. And it's the probably the smallest transmitter. This is the receiver. This transmits, this receives. Um, this is probably the smallest transmitter on the market. It is simple and easy, which works out really good. I know whenever we do the, uh, when we would do the brick, collars, you know, the traditional, well, as we'll call them, old-fashioned collars, uh, people would always get confused with all the buttons and their eyes would glaze over and they'd look at me and they'd say, just tell me the one I have to use. This is so much easier. What we do, there's a green, a green, a blue, and a red, right? You see those colors on these buttons here? Each of them will do something. The greens go up and down. So there's an up arrow and a down area, arrow. They go up and down. The red is the turn off. Technically, it's a turn on too. And the program button. So it has the little circle with the line up at the top. And then the blue is the transmit button. So it has these three waves, these arcing waves on it. Right? So if you can see that, see? That's what I'm talking about. Turn it on. You can actually push any button to turn it on. So I can hit the blue button to turn it on. Okay? I can hit the up button to turn it on. To turn it off, I hit the red button. Might have to hit it twice, but be careful because if you hit it too many times, it's going to go right back on because remember when I said any button, I mean any button. Okay, so we have that on. To go up, you see it says one, up, 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 up. Now you're saying, holy cow, are we back in the stone ages? You have to go up by pushing it one at a time. That's ridiculous. It only goes up to nine. So it makes it a lot easier. But wait, you ask me, some of them go well over 100. Why are we going back down to the Stone Ages with only nine? Well, there's nine low and nine high. And really, whenever you have 100, do you really use all 100? Do you really use 76 and 77 and 78 and 79? Do you? Because if you do, that's pretty weird because I haven't known anybody to actually use all of the buttons, all 100 levels. Um, or more, right? Usually you'll use a handful at the bottom, right? And then you'll use, uh, you know, higher ones if you have a dog who needs that, but you don't use every single button. So some of them are, you know, bullshitty type buttons, but, you know, to each his own. I use on this one, all dogs start at a one. And because there's no dial for me to do, there's no dial it and look at it and see what I've got. I can do this with my eyes shut, right? So I'm at a one. Now I can feel, I know my screen's right here. I know this is my transmit stim button. This is my up button. This is my down button. So I'm at a one. You want me to go up to five? Two, three, four, five. You want me to go down to three? Four, three. You want me to go up to eight? Four, five, six, seven, eight. You want me to go down to six? One, two. And I'm at six, right? So I can do it with my eyes shut, which is what I was getting at, uh, which is really nice. So I don't have to dial and hope that everything works out good. And I also, I'm not going to accidentally hit the dial where, whoops, now the dog's up higher than what the dog should be at, which is really nice. Uh, it is, if I push and hold this, you see how it's blinking on a six? Blinking on a six means it's transmitting on a six. Is it low or high? You get to program that. 
So here you go. How you program low and high is first, I'm going to hit the red button. And then if I want the high, I'm going to hit the top button too and watch what happens. Nine, 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 nine. That means I'm in the high settings. You don't need the high settings. Okay. Most people don't. And if you do, if you think like, no, 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 like my dog is weird. I need the high settings still. You're going to start with the low settings. Now there's no way to look at it and to say, I'm in low or I'm in high. So you just have to reprogram it. And you saw how quick it was to do the high. How do you think we're going to do the low? Start by pushing the red button and then pushing the low button. And you do this for a few seconds until it goes one, 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 one. Once it flashes one, 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 um, or flashes one, right? Then I know I'm in the low settings again. So that's what I want. Now this blue button, I told you that's the transmit stim button. It's, uh, I'm going to take off the tone vibrate here because how do you do that? I'll tell you that first is you push the red button and you see, you push it and it comes up and it's tone vibrate. And then it's hourglass, which has a delay, right? So that's what you do with that. I'm not wild about those settings on it. So I'm going to shut those off. I have used them. I'm not saying that they're bad and you should never use them. They're just not my favorite. So I usually don't work, work them that way. And I'm going to dial it down to a one. Now, if I push and hold this blue button, you see it just flashes one, 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 one. Okay. Now say I want a ramping stim on here. I want to push the button and have it go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. For whatever reason, I don't start clients off this way, but say I wanted to do this. I do it for my own dog. I like it, which is why you can push and hold one, 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 or you can tap one, 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 or one, 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 right. Or finger kick. You know what? You guys need to see this. You do. So I can tap. Tap, 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 and I'm just doing the finger kick. You see both of my hands right here. I can push and hold. That's how I know it's it's all synced up. And this is flashing too. Okay. Say hi. Ah, you know, I really would like to ramp up. Uh, right now I've got momentary or Nick, and I've got constant. Right. Nick is I just tap it. Constant is I push and hold. So Nick. Or momentary, right? As slow as I want, or as fast as I want. Um, constant, push and hold. Okay. Say I want ramp. What you do is red button, and then blue button. And what happens is, it flashes one, two, three, four, five. Now watch what happens. I'm pushing and holding and it's going to climb up. Okay. I can just tap, 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 push and hold and let go. Okay. That's pretty cool. So I like to get my clients into the habit whenever they get their e collar to use the tap, 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 tap with the finger kick or with the button for eventually if we do move them to the ramping mode, they're all set. And all they have to do is tap, 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 tap for constant, which is what they're used to. And the tap and hold means, push and hold, means that you're ramping up. Okay? It's one button. It's an all-in-one button. So you've got the momentary or Nick, you've got constant, and you've got ramp up all in one. How cool is that? And that's how this works. That's all the buttons. So red, and, red or I'm sorry, the green ones just go up and down. The blue is the stem in it. That's what this is linked up to is the blue button and the red is the program. So program with the blue, that is the ramp or the unramp program with the low button with the down button is low settings program with the up button is high settings. Easy peasy, right? Makes sense. It's logical. Why? Because it was actually designed by a dog trainer. So what do you do? You use it with your dog. Now this is how it comes. Okay. With the elastic here, I'm going to show you my personal one on what I did to change it up. And then I'm going to pair them with each other so you can see how easy it is to pair these uh, just in case. So I just had a dog in. I had a client dog in. Uh, and her e-collar came 
the elastic on it because she is a chameleon. So her chameleon came in all funny. Uh, she had um, this cord here had been replaced, had been knotted up a few times together. Um, it was skinnier cord than what it had come with initially. One of her contacts was missing. Uh, you know, you can tell it had been used well, but I'm not going to, I can't use it that way because I'm more of a perfectionist and I don't want to use it that way. So what I did, apparently those don't fit in there. Uh, what I did is I just changed it up for her and I put it better, uh, than what it was. Okay. So here's how I have mine. So this is one of my sets. Okay. It was from Barton Michelson so has the funny one. Yeah. So I kind of like that. How do I set up my contact points on the red island? I have my red big contact and then these are the new chameleons or the new feathers. And you can see with the feather, it has these uh, inside there instead of just having these plastic screw hickeys, which is how it used to come. There is a little metal screw thingy and then this plastic wing nut, which keeps it more solid which means it doesn't get messed up in the hair as much. It means it doesn't break as much, which is what I like, and it doesn't bend as much. So I have this on both sides, plus this contact point here helps protect the feather here, and you're gonna get contact with one of them, okay? Uh, now, remember what I told you, the more contact points you have, uh, the less they're gonna feel the sensation. Well, you notice the feather takes up two contact points. Usually one set of feathers is good. I have known people to use two sets of feathers, one set of feathers, a set is two, and two sets of feathers, and it's worked out just fine. Now, what I did, this is why you got to watch how you turn it on and off. There we go. Uh, what I did for mine right here, okay, is I cut this plastic top off. Now, this is heat shrink, so I cut it off, and I pulled it out through this, and I put on two, let me show you two small um, leash clips, right? So I had a bunch of leash clips because you know Rich and I used to make leather leashes for ourselves and our clients because I couldn't find leather leashes that I wanted. So when we had the training center, we would get batches of leather in, we would condition it, we would cut it, and we would make them into leashes. Uh, we don't do that anymore, but I have a whole bunch of leash clips. I had a whole bunch, I've used them all up, but these were the smallest ones I could find. Um, I have another one coming today that I'm gonna try and see. And whatever you do to one side, you kind of want to do to the other side. So that's why there's two on here. Here's the butt. If you have a dog who has a small neck and you're using a medium, you might not have room to add an extra two inches or so onto it. So we're looking at um, some different carabiners and stuff to see how it goes. But you cut it, you pull it through, you put the whatever it is on it, and then you push it back through. Now the trick to pushing it back through, because it does have one of these locking washer wheels, locking wheels is when I go to push it through, I want to make sure that this is not at the end. I want to make sure that the washing wheel is in the middle of the cord that's on there. I push this one through. I keep it over on this side and I work on rolling it. See how I can get it rolled by angling this just right. And as it rolls down on one side, it'll go up on the other side and that will help it get through. Once it comes through, I will knot it again. Okay. And I will heat shrink it again because I got extra heat shrink because I like my things to look nice. And I like that they do heat shrink on here. So then what I'm left with is this, which is weird, but it works. Now how this locking thingy works is you push whatever it fits your dog, right? Say it fits like this. You push down as far as you can get. And then you take the bottom piece, not the antenna. You take the circle bits and you pull as hard as you can. Now it's locked. And it's not coming undone because that wheel is at the narrow base. Now you want to get it unlocked. What do you do? Do you push this as hard as you can? You can. You can do that. Or here's the other tip. You take one of the antenna and you pull it. And you take one of the antenna and you pull it and it will unlock it. You want another fun part on that? Gypsy, when she's playing with dogs in the yard or in the house, and they have an uh, e-collar on with the, with the antennas, she likes to take one and pull it. Yeah. So they have elastic collar covers. If you want to use that, it's, uh, they have them. I always have those on stock too, um, unless I get sold out because people do like those. I do sell a lot of those. Um, or they have these curly Q ones, so they don't stick out like this. Um, they're elastic curly, so they're a lot shorter. So we use those as well. 
Uh, or she, they don't get any color whenever they, they play with Gypsy because, yeah, that's Gyps. So what do I do with this? Well, where it comes through, see where it comes through on this one, where that elastic comes through? I put a split key ring, a small split key ring, okay, on both sides. Because remember, whatever we do to one side, we have to do on the other to keep it balanced, okay? So I have this. Now, look what I do clip it on, I get my dog, and instead of having to do one of these and getting it over his neck and on, what do I do? I brush out his fur around his neck. So before they get their e-collars on, they get their neck brushed out and their body brushed out usually because once the neck's done, like the body's not that bad, even for my goldens. Um, but what do we do? We go around, we clip it, we tighten it, we lock it, we are good to go. And it fits my dog. Whenever it's time to come off, I unclip it and it can come off. And I don't, it doesn't get caught up in their fur. It doesn't matter if I already have their slip lead on them or their prong collar on them or their flat collar on them. I'm not trying to get this over any collar. I'm just putting it on and off that way. Okay. That's a really nice hack that we do for them, but you can see too, it also makes this a lot bigger now. You get the key ring and you get those. So look, I have something coming in the mail today. Um, it's an S carabiner. It's what some of the others use. So I'm gonna try that off and see what I think, okay? What else? I wanna show you how to pair up and then I wanna talk about Emily. So we'll talk Emily first and then I'm gonna pair everything up for you and show you all of this stuff is interchangeable, which is really nice. Uh, there are other transmitters. I do have the uh, CTT, uh, which is really nice, which is the Chameleon Tactical Transmitter. I can do two dogs and two finger kicks per dog. Uh, the TT4K, I can do one dog with only one finger kick. And then they also currently have the PT3000, which is a 3000 meter range. This range is um, 200 meters on the Chameleon 3 to the TT4K. This is only 200 meter range which is two football fields, which is more than most people need anyway. Uh, but if you want more, the PT3000 has a 3000 meter range, which is pretty nice. Uh, and the CTT has, hmm, let me see, because I had done a comparison of everything. Uh, so I have the ranges right here. I just have to pull it up. Uh, up to 1000 meters is the CTT. So it's more than the TT4K, but not as much as the PT3000. Uh, and this is also not waterproof. It is only water resistant. Okay, so it's water resistant. So if you're swimming, do not take this in the pool with you. If you're swimming and you want to take one in the pool with you, take your CTT in the pool with you. Because the other ones, you shouldn't be doing that. Okay. Uh, Emily is a USB program that only works with Windows. I have Apple. So Luke just got a Windows and I'm going to make him do that and put that on there because with Emily, you can get in and change things. You can add it where it does the contact um, method check after every time you stim, but you only can do that with Emily. With Emily, I can also lock out different levels. So say I'm working with a client, I can lock out everything above a three. So they can only use one, two, and three. They can't use four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and they can't use high. You can do that and then you could unlock it later whenever they need it unlocked, you know, but you can gradually give them even just give them one for the first week to you. They have options to have two at the second week, maybe options to have three at the third week when you're doing private sessions with them, which is neat, but you can play with different things with Emily. You can get into the program and change it up for, for different callers. How neat is that? Right? Like what other company lets you do that? I love it. I think it's great. Um, one of my callers, uh, is set up to have that, um, but not, um, not all of them yet, because I only had one of them with me whenever I had a friend do it for me. And I thought it was pretty cool. But that's Emily. Um, next is going to be how to pair everything up. <clears throat> this finger kick, I can use, I could pair this finger kick to any transmitter, any transmitter. A CTT, a PT3000, a TT4K, mine, yours, his, hers, any of them. Theirs, see? This, a TT4FK, I can use to pair to any Chameleon 3. 
How do we do that? Well, there's different things that you do. First, you can use the, uh, the magnet on the key ring, that little circle magnet, or you can use this. But to pair these two together, I'm going to turn this on. Okay. First, I'm going to see if they're paired together now. Yes, they are. So I'm going to divorce it. So I'm going to hold it. I think this is why I like the other better. See how it's flashing rapidly? Now I'm going to wipe. It flashed, and now it's back to normal. Now let's see if I wiped it. You see how the numbers are climbing, but nothing's going on here. I have wiped it. Now what can happen is somebody could come in and ping me while I'm trying to do this. So if you're doing this and multiple people have them, make sure theirs are off so they don't come and, and um, snipe you and get in there, right? So how do you do this? You push and hold. Okay, whenever it flashes rapidly like that, double flash, you push the stim button. Push the stim button. Now these are married together, okay? So if you just pick up, if you keep all of them in a container and you don't know which one is which, just pick up two of them and marry them together every time. Right? You could do that. And now, how do I marry this? Is this paired together? I'm pushing the button on here. Nothing's going on on here. So these are not married together. So how do you marry these two together? Is you push the red button. And what's going to happen is it's going to show uh, the speaker. And it's usually, oh, it's on rising. So it only shows the speaker a few times. And then it's going to flash. I'm just pushing and holding. See how it's flashing? Now I'm going to push the button. How cool was that, right? So while it was flashing, I pushed the finger kick. And the finger kick then pairs to this, and because it pairs to this, it automatically went to that. And because I had it set up on vibrate ten, you could hear it, right? And because I had it set on rising, you could hear all the do 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 do. So now everything's paired up together. But it starts back up at the light one because that's what we want. Okay? That is how you marry the finger kick to the transmitter, the transmitter to the receiver. This transmit, this receives. Uh, and how you get it all done pretty quickly, along with learning everything there is to know about the chameleon. Remember, we talked about the different patents here. We talked about the chameleon patent. We talked about the finger kick patent, about the contact method, which is where it does the running lights to let you know if you have contact. The SSC, which is that water one, so you don't over stim whenever your dog's wet. The NHT, which is the new high tension, which is the battery on why the collar can last five to seven days, not hours. Uh, the, what do I have? Oh, the tone vibrate, how it's different tone vibrates at different uh, levels, which you just heard. And then we talked a little bit about the Emily. Okay, that's what we talked about today. We also married and divorced. We divorced and married uh, these together. I showed you how to do the charge. I showed you how to uh, do my lifestyle hack for awesomeness, um, which I didn't come up with it. John um, Dyer came up with it. Um, he's pretty awesome and he breeds really nice mouths. So that's, and how to do all the chargey stuff, how to plug everything in, how to check everything. We covered a lot of ground today. And, you know, I want you to, if you use e collar, you know, do something fun with your dog today. If you don't use e collar, do something fun with your dog today. Uh, because group class is more of an info lecture today than uh, actual group class. Oh, and I do have to apologize about not having group class last week. Uh, we had gone to Universal for the day, and then I talked about it Tuesday night in the webinar. Uh, my goal was to go live from Universal because we had uh, four dogs and seven people. Uh, I wanted to go live, but having to wear the masks, it was hard to, to, for people to hear you, right? Uh, because everyone had to wear a mask. And the music and the background noise it, it made it difficult to hear even if we were standing this far apart. And we decided it would probably, I, I kept looking all day for a quiet place where we could do a Facebook Live. Uh, there was one area by, uh, a couple areas where we pottied the dogs, 
but by then we were just done and I didn't want to set up and be over in the dog potty area for an hour doing an online course or an online um, group class. So I do apologize. Um, I, I hope you weren't waiting long for it. I hope we helped with giving the pictures and the video clips on our trip uh, and what all we did. And then we went over it, like I said, this past Tuesday, which is actually up in the uh, podcast. So if you didn't hear it, you can either go back on uh, Dream Dogs on Facebook or you can go back on the podcast and listen uh, for our trip to Universal, what happened with COVID and with service dog and trainings and, and how things went. Me and Karen talked about it. So that's it for this week. Um, I will see you Tuesday and then I will see you next week. Oh, next week, actually. <laughs> Next week, we are going to Disney. So Karen is coming out, um, I believe, Saturday's Animal Kingdom Day. So I do not know if we will go live on the drive over there. I do not know if we will go live before we head over there or while we are there. Uh, but we will be in Animal Kingdom next Saturday. And then Sunday, I believe, is uh, Hollywood Studios. And Monday is Epcot. Luke's birthday is Monday. He turns 19. And uh, he loves Epcot the best. So we're doing Epcot for his birthday. And why are we waiting until now to do it is because we're all silver passes and we were in blackout. So we weren't able to go to Disney uh, until I think Thursday or Friday is the first day we can go back this coming. So we're excited to go back to Disney and see everything. I know the crowds aren't near as bad as what they used to be. Uh, and then we plan on bringing uh, Diana and Ross and siren and possibly gypsy we'll see um diana and siren are going to be in the stroller because that's a fantastic thing to be able to expose them to and uh and then gypsy and ross will be in shoes because they must be okay uh but that's that is what's going on right now uh we have a new dog in super fun his name is fox and he was doing the box um but super stoked. We've got a lot of stuff um, that I can't wait to tell you about, but I'm just waiting on a few things to happen first. So stay tuned. Uh, have a fantastic weekend and do something really fun with your dog. Okay. Bye-bye guys.